Hey squad, Sykes here and welcome back to another Sea of Thieves tutorial here on Installation X. In this video I will be breaking down everything you need to know about the latest story adventure Lost Sands. So if you enjoyed this video please make sure you leave a like, head over to Installation X and subscribe and hit that bell for notifications for more Sea of Thieves uploads. So let's get into it. Your first step just like with any other adventure is to seek out Lorena at any outpost. A difference this time is Lorena will issue you with two options, the Hunter's Path or the Servant's Path. Now for context, the adventure pits the residents of Golden Sands led by Merrick who are trying to rebuild the outpost against the Reapers led by the Servant of the Flame who are trying to destroy the outpost. Therefore, you are given the option of which path you wish to take to align with either faction. Now, you will need to complete both paths for all the deeds anyway, but it's worth knowing if you wish to repeat the adventure multiple times. For this video, I'm going to walk you through the Hunter's Path first and then the Servant's Path. Once you've selected the Hunter's Path, Lorena will direct you to head over to Golden Sands and speak to Merrick. Once you have arrived at Golden Sands, you will need to head to the Gold Hoarder's Tent on the west side of the island and he will be standing there in front of the Gold Hoarder's Tent. Speak to Merrick and he will explain that he and the other residents are trying to rebuild the outpost. Merrick sent Tina and Sharon away to find supplies, but they have yet to return and Merrick has tasked you to find them as he is worried about them. You will then be issued with a note telling you that Sharon is on Smuggler's Bay and Tina is on Cannon Cove. Now, before you leave, there are four journals that Merrick has that you need to find for this adventure, for all of the deeds. The first of these is on Golden Sands. You will need to head to the far east of the outpost, past the tavern and over the wooden bridge. You will see the journal on the floor after coming over the bridge. Now you can head to Cannon Cove or Smuggler's Bay in any order. Sailing to Cannon Cove first, you will need to sail to the south of the island to the beach. As you approach, you will see a banner signifying Tina's location. Head over and talk to Tina and she will reveal that she has hidden her rum bottle somewhere on the island and there is a map in her rowboat that has run aground near the shore. Pick up the map, head to the X marks the spot location and dig up the rum bottles. Now importantly for the deeds, you will need to deliver the rum bottles in perfect condition, so make sure you are careful when carrying the bottles and loading them onto your boat, so no jumping, careful not to fall. Now the second of Merrick's journals can be found on Cannon Cove as well. You will need to head back to the beach on the west side and head north towards the pier. You see the journal lying on the floor in front of a large rock formation. Next is to head up to Smuggler's Bay to find Sharon. Sharon is located on the west side of the island close to the archway on the beach. Again, her location will be marked with a yellow-orange banner. Same as last time, after speaking to Sharon, you will need to grab the map from her rowboat and then find the X marks the spot and then dig up the sailcloth. You will need to sell the sailcloth in perfect condition, just like the rum bottles, so this time make sure you don't get it wet, if not it won't count towards the deed. You will also be able to grab the third of Merrick's journals at Smuggler's Bay as well. Head to the east of the island to the sand strip between the island and the archway. You are looking for a fishing net camp where the journal will be on the sand underneath. Final step is to head back to Golden Sands and sell the sailcloth and rum bottles to Merrick to complete the hunter's path. Now you will need to head back to Lorina to begin the servant's path. Now at this point it is also worth noting that the fourth of Merrick's journals is a little bit out of the way at Stephen's spoils. Head on over to the sea pose and you will find the journal on the floor to the left of the shop. Once you are back with Lorina at any outpost you will need to speak to her and select the servant's path. Lorina will tell you that there have been some strange sightings over at Wanderer's Refuge that need investigating. You will receive a note telling you to head to the highest bell so head to the west side of Wanderer's Refuge. As you head up from the beach, you will see a phantom reaper parrot leading the way. Once you get to the bell, the figure will disappear and you will need to follow the parrots to the cannon and then finally over to the rune table for Grey Merrill's ritual where you will need to speak to the Servant of the Flame himself. The Servant of the Flame will tell you to come join him at Reaper's Hideout so that he can instruct you on his plans. Just like with Merrick, the Servant has four journals for you to find. The first of these is on Wanderer's Refuge, in the cave through the centre of the island with a small river. Head down and find the campfire, there you will find the first of the servant's journals nearby. Now the next task is to head over to Reaper's hideout and speak to the servant of the flame in the main building. He will instruct you to locate a soul flame robo and row to twin groves. You will also be given a Reaper's compass to find your way across the sea in your rowboat. Now you don't have to rowboat between all of the islands if you don't want to, you can take your ship with the rowboat attached and then drop it off as you get nearby, more on that in a second, but it didn't actually take that long to rowboat between the islands and it was a little bit of a different experience so I went for it. Now the important point here is the Reaper smugglers will only appear for Soul Flame rowboats and will stay hidden if a ship is nearby. 
This means if you are going to take your ship with the rowboat attached, you need to park your ship a little bit of a distance away from the islands as not to spook the smugglers. I personally just abandoned my sloop at Reapers as I didn't have anything on it and if it sunk, it sunk. Before you leave though, you will want to grab the second of the servant's journals. The second journal can be found on Reaper's hideout, behind the main building, underneath the scaffolding, close to the ammo crate. Once you have rowed or sailed over to Twin Groves, you will need to use the compass to find the exact location of the hidden smuggler. The smuggler will appear, if everything's good, to hand over a relic cache that needs to be delivered via your rowboat or your ship to Cannon Cove. Before you leave Twin Groves, you will find the location of the third of the servant's journal on the beach on the northwest point of the island near some palm trees. Now you will need to head over to the southeast corner or beach of Cannon Cove. Hop off with your rowboat and your compass and to find the location of the second smuggler. The smuggler will appear if all is well and you can deliver the cash to them. Whilst you're on Cannon Cove, you will need to find the third of the servant's journals. The servant's journal can be found on the main beach on the west side. This time you will find the journal just past the broken rowboat in front of some of the rocks on the beach. The final task is to explode your soul flame rowboat near to Golden Sands. I personally just took my rowboat straight over to Golden Sands from Cannon Cove, it didn't take that long, but if you want to sail it over there it's completely up to you. Pull up close to the shore and ignite the keg to release the soul flame energy near to the shore and damage Golden Sands, finishing your note. Finally, you will need to make your way back to Reaper's Hideout to speak to the Servant of the Flame and complete the Servant's Path. Now, the bigger picture at play with this adventure is that Rare are allowing the Sea of Thieves community to decide the fate of Golden Sands based upon their actions in the game. There are a couple of things that you can do that can alter the outcome of Golden Sands outside of the notes for each path. Selling fruit and wood crates and relic caches directly to Merrick at Golden Sands will add supplies to the outpost and move the needle in their favour. Taking Soul Flame rowboats that are emergent on other islands and blowing them up at Golden Sands will move the needle in the Reaper's favour. So choose your side and we will see what the fate of Golden Sands will be at the end of this adventure. Well squad, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did then please make sure you leave a like, head over to Installation X and subscribe and hit that bell for notifications of more Sea of Thieves uploads. Let me know your thoughts on the Lost Sands adventure in the comments section. This one's been very different and very interesting which has been good so far. And follow myself and the channel on social media with links in the description. And as always, I'm Sykes and for more on Sea of Thieves and all things Xbox, stay tuned to Installation X. Bye guys.